It's Brain Rush with Dr. Tom and drum rolls with Tracy Thornton out of Greensboro, North Carolina. You selected 20 influence songs for us today. Can you tell us how you came up with your list? It was really cool. Like when you asked me to put this list together, uh-huh. it just I just started going back when I started learning how to play the drums. And um, it was just different songs that stuck out that um, probably influenced the direction I went with in mm-hmm. music and mm-hmm. drumming. And um, like we were talking about earlier, it's like uh, I probably could have put 200 songs down, <laughs> 2,000. But, uh, but these are 20 that stick out. So obviously what they say your first, you know, intuition you should go with so mm-hmm. there we have it so it's easy we could have just done a tracy thornton show of 200 songs over the next two years right i'm sure the audience would have stayed tuned for that <laughs> <laughs> onto the list kiss alive a oh, hundred thousand years yes well when i was i don't know five or six years old um i was allowed to get my first kiss record mm-hmm. but i couldn't keep the pictures i had to throw those away <laughs> with the blood and all that stuff coming out of Gene's mouth, but uh, but they did let me get the record. Mm-hmm. My mom and dad scratched out "Hotter Than Hell" and "Cold Gin," so I wouldn't listen to those two songs. <laughs> but um, the hundred thousand years, of course, on the Kiss Alive record is the big ten minute song with the big Peter Chris drum solo. Mm-hmm. And uh, I didn't have a real drum kit then. I had like boxes. I had hubcaps. I had. Um, <laughs> anything that I could hit on pots and pans. <laughs> Um, didn't really have a real drum kit, but I would surround myself with them like Peter, Chris, mm-hmm. and some buddies of mine would come over with tennis rackets and we put the makeup <laughs> on our face. And uh, but the whole record, of course, I loved. But um, and of course, when you're six, you like Kiss because you just like looking at them, mm-hmm. you know. But uh, but yeah, that um, with the big drum solo, I tried to learn how to play it and just the whole vibe of um, that kind of music and um, really the hearing the first drum solo. Mm-hmm. Um, was really, really cool. I was too young to go really see them live, so that was like my experience and mm-hmm. what a can, live show would be. Can you verbally recreate some of that drum part? I think, man, I used to, <laughs> this is what got me disappointed <laughs> when you grow up and really learn to know better. Yeah. He's got all these drums, and when you're a kid, his drum set looks bigger than a house. Yeah. But then when you see old footage of it, he's basically playing one drum with a flange on it. Yeah. So one drum's going... Right? Yeah. But with the phalange, the drum sounds like. And he's like, man, he's going up and down all these drums, but it was all Hollywood and effects. And then you're like, and then, you know, Kiss is coming. By the time this interview airs, it would be in here. So I'll see Peter Chris for a third time in my life. Yeah. I love Kiss, but he's got to be one of the worst rock drummers on the planet. Sorry, Peter, but. But um, I had the gig in a heartbeat. So anyway, but um, <laughs> but yeah, as a six-year-old kid, it was the changing of the world. It's a brain rush with Dr. Tom and drum rolls with Tracy Thornton, Missing Persons, Mental Hopscotch. Ah, yes. I love this because actually in the early 80s, I was a heavy metal freak. Had the big heavy metal hair. Yeah. Motley Crue, <laughs> you know, and new wave bands were pretty, you know, wussies. You know, you get in... That wasn't very cool to listen to, but the missing persons had that heavy thing with, you know, of course, Terry Bazio on the drums. Mm -hmm. And, um, but what really got me on that song, it really wasn't released on the first spring session Elm record when they came out with it. It was like a demo track and they were the band in a movie called lunch wagon. Mm -hmm. It used to be on HBO. And I think I was maybe in seventh or eighth grade. Now I used to go to my friend's house who had HBO. We didn't have HBO in my neighborhood in Summerfield. (laughs) Way out in the woods where I grew up in <laughs> Summerfield. So I go to my friend's house and watch HBO. And during this summer, one of the movies that were played a lot was um, Lunch Wagon. Mm-hmm. But Missing Persons, you know, were the band. They were in the story and they played a lot. Mm-hmm. And just the drum, the whole drum part that was very musical was almost Neil Purdish, mm-hmm. of course. But uh, And of course, I didn't know Bazio from Zappa. I was too young to really even know who Frank Zappa was. But, mm-hmm. you no, know, just the whole chorus. You know, he has drums for a musical instead of just a drum beat. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's what really turned me on and really um, get to understand that drummers, of course, you had to be good and keep perfect time, Mm -hmm. but you could actually play melodies with your drums Mm -hmm. to complement the music if you could do it tastefully. Right. So that's a really... And plus, he had the rototons, which back in the day were pretty cool sounding. Mm-hmm. You know, the doop, you could change the tune of your tune, Tom. So mm-hmm. that's the story on that one. 
Okay, it's Brainwash with Dr. Tom and Drum Rolls with Tracy Thornton, The Knack, My Sharona. Well, My Sharona, of course, is known for its drum line. My Sharona. That was just, it really showcased, it let people, it let a drummer, aspiring drummer like myself know that you could come up with even a simple beat and be a main part of a tune. Mm-hmm. It wasn't all guitar players. <laughs> <laughs> and their riffs that would make the songs. A drummer could actually do that. And uh, I actually played that song to try out to get into a um, a talent show when I was in fourth grade. Mm-hmm. Got into talent show. And then the day before the big talent show, I wanted to change it because everybody liked the song. Mm-hmm. I wanted to play a song that nobody really knew that I liked. So I played Gary Newman's Cars. Mm-hmm. And I actually co-won it with... Um, this girl who was a gymnast who should have won it all, but we like, and I think my prize was um, fuzzy dice from Greece, the movie Greece. I still have them somewhere, but that was my prize, mm-hmm. nine years old. But yeah, my Sharona was really cool knowing that, you know, a pop music tune could be a no brainer and mm-hmm. have a really significant part in the tune. All right, would you be willing to talk about the role of the guitar- percussionist uh, drummer in a band? The role, um, mm-hmm. well, basically, when I teach bands or when I had um, the Sons of Steel and when I teach kids now, mm-hmm. I always let the drummer know I don't care who you are. I, to me, the drummer is the most important person in the band. It's yeah. not the lead singer. It's not the guitar player. Mm-hmm. If the drummer's not playing right, then the drummer, the lead singer, the guitar player is not going to sound good. Yeah. The drummer's the heartbeat of the band, the engine in the band, and I try to let them know if... If you're walking down the street and your heart stops beating, your brain's not going to work, your arms are not going to work, mm-hmm. you're just your whole body's going to give out. So, the drummer to me, even though you're in the back of the stage and normally you're not seen, mm-hmm. you are the most important member of the group, and it really takes a lot of dedication to make a band feel good. Mm-hmm. Um, you're going to go through a stage where you want to show off all your licks and all that kind of thing, but basically your job is to make the your band sound good and the members in the band. Mm-hmm feel good so they can play to their potential and uh so i think that's what my role as a drummer and that's really helped me out when i've explored other instruments since that aren't the backbeat of a band Mm -hmm. and to play with other drummers Mm -hmm. and not being the drummer of a group knowing how important that is because if you're not feeling good with another drummer back there it's it's just useless Mm -hmm. you know so um to me yeah the drummer is if there are four people in the band i think the drummer is 60 percent of it so Mm -hmm. That could be biased, but I really think that's true. <laughs> it's uh, Brain Rocks with Dr. Tom and Drum Rolls with Tracy Thornton, Rush Xanadu. Um, I included this one again. I almost didn't, but I really love this song for, you know, it's a, like a 10-minute epic. Mm-hmm. Um, but the big, spacey, you know, thing they had in it that really didn't have any drums, it was just... You know, this big, organic, euphoric Mm -hmm. synthesizer keyboard thing with Neil Peart playing chimes and Mm -hmm. woodblocks to color it. Mm -hmm. And um, then, of course, the song is great. It's got great drum parts once you get into it, and the lyrics are pretty cool. Um, But it really, that song didn't influence me until probably 10 years later when I started really getting into steel drums. Mm -hmm. And the steel drums, you can really get that euphoric it doesn't have to be Calypso. They can really sound sinister and euphoric and adding those kind of vibes. Oh, okay. Um, so 10 years later after I liked the tune, um, I, I think I was more influenced by it than I knew at the time. Mm-hmm. You know, later on it really came out. So. Mm-hmm.